Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. And don't forget to check out the Bad Weapon Rehabilitation servers at www.badweaponrehab.tf. Check the links in the description for more information, and let's get into the video. Well, it's December. That means it's time for my annual tradition of doing a weapon review of one of the winter-themed weapons. Let's see how many there are left. Oh. Well, cross that tradition off the list. The Spicicle is the weapon I have such mixed feelings about, and if you watch some of my previous videos, then you might have a grasp on why that is, but for everyone else, let me walk you through my thoughts on this weapon. Okay, stat time, everyone's favorite. Uh, it's the stock knife, but when you get touched by any flame particle while it's active, the Spicicle melts and you gain 1 second of fire immunity and 10 seconds of afterburn immunity and you can wait 15 seconds or pick up the metal packs to recharge your knife after it melts. All good, all good. We don't have to beat around the Christmas bush here. This weapon is designed for one thing and one thing only, making Pyro's job against you harder. Now I'm not entirely sure how to feel about this. On the one hand, you guys should know how I feel about weapons that are designed with the specific purpose of countering one class in particular. I don't care much for them. The Razorback, the Danger Shield, hell, the item doesn't even have to be good. The third degree still sucks, but I think it's dumb that its only purpose in life is to combat medics. Same goes for the man melter with other pyros. Weapons need to hit a balance of being multifaceted without covering so many bases that they end up countering almost everything, or without having an upside that's so negligible that it may as well not counter anything. So right off the bat, the spicicle is catching my stink eye, but then there's what's on the other hand. Oh, right, pyro is the worst. At least when you're a spy, that's certainly the case. I've mentioned this a couple of times before, but I don't think that the relationship between Spy and Pyro is balanced at all. I saw some people in my last video say that Spy can just gun down the Pyro before the Pyro can flame him down, and yeah, in a vacuum where it's literally just you two in a head-to-head -head fight, sure, that's what'll happen as long as you're accurate with your shots, but in the actual game of TF2, you know what happens instead? You'll be walking along, invisible, minding your own business, when a flame particle tickles you and now your entire life is over. Some of you may be aware of an item that was tested and conceptualized, but never actually added to the game. The Flame Retardant Suit. <laughs> hey, be mature. Redon, 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 Stop fucking me! Basically, this would have been an item, probably in the sapper slot if I had to guess, that would have done exactly as the name says given the spy a passive fire resistance. So instead, what Valve decided to do is give a shittier version of that to spy and give the completely passive class nullifying unlock to sniper instead, because fuck it, why not? It's not bad enough that he can already turn off one class. Give him another. To put it extremely simply, the imbalance between spy and pyro is so insanely bad that I really don't think spy having an option to make pyro's job a tiny bit harder especially compared to the aforementioned equip the shotgun right now or else good luck killing me in this lifetime shield, is all that bad. But I think it speaks of an issue that Pyro's mere existence is so oppressive to spies, and Valve clearly realizes this, that maybe spies should be buffed at base to be a little less vulnerable to Pyro's in the first place? But hey, we have unlocks for all that, I guess. That's good class design. So what does all this mean in practice? Well, it means that in 8 out of 9 class interactions, this is basically identical to the stock knife, just with a tiny bit of insurance for that extra ninth interaction. Something I find kind of interesting is that pretty much all of the other knife unlocks work in a reverse fashion to this one, by which I mean they make your life coming out of spawn a little bit harder in exchange for giving you more post-backstab survivability or opportunities to be aggressive after you get a stab. While the Spicicle lets you have as much health or cloak as you want coming out of spawn, while giving you a general survivability against one of your biggest threats, whether that's before or after a backstab. It's an interesting change of pace in terms of balancing, but again, I can't help but see it as mostly a stock knife reskin in the vast majority of situations. Besides Pyros, the only other time the Spicicle's effect really comes into play are against Huntsman Snipers with lit arrows, so De Groot Keep, Cow Mangler Soldiers, which hey, if you're getting hit by a direct charge shot, you're dead anyway, and probably the biggest nuisance, Hualong Heater Heavies. And by nuisance, I mean you have to jump over the Ring of Fire to get a stab on them. It's not that hard. There is also the matter of the ice statues left behind after you get a backstab, 
which are a lot more conspicuous than simple ragdolls laying on the ground, but roughly as conspicuous as half-vanished corpses with cosmetics still completely visible lying on the ground. You deserve so much better. But honestly, this rarely changes how I approach a situation when I'm the one seeing the statues. It's less like, oh man, I'd better watch out for a spy lurking around here, and more like, oh wow, I can shoot two rockets at their spy and he'll actually die. Pfft, sweet. I'm already checking anyone suspicious for being a spy anyway. What difference does it make if they're leaving behind evidence of their nefarious deeds? It's a 12v12 pub server, I'd be more surprised if you didn't have a spy. So yeah, even though this feature is given red text on the weapon description, I see this as a pretty much nothing downside. And the most information it can give you is the general location of the spy, which isn't all that reliable considering how long the statues last, and the fact that the dead ringer exists and gives you a speed boost letting you clear massive distances. So yeah, I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled for that spy I already figured was there. But what about when the fire rises? The fire resistance and immunity should be one of the most powerful boons you can ask for as a spy, right? Well, yes and no. Yes, because it can absolutely save your life in a lot of situations. The amount of times that the spicicle has gotten me out of a jam in my time using it have well outweighed the times it screwed me over. Oh, but yeah, that means it can screw you over. It's not been super common for me, but I've been in at least a couple of situations where right as I'm about to get the backstab on someone, I get puffed by fire, deleting my knife and seemingly encouraging my spy to want to sap the enemy. Perhaps in the momentary confusion, he mistook them for a sentry. Or a quail. This can be pretty annoying, as it essentially robs you of a kill, but even then, there are situations where this has happened and I at least managed to make it out with my life, which is pretty valuable, I think. Spy can be a pretty suicidal class, but in a lot of situations, I'd rather live to fight another day than secure one backstab. That's kind of the trade-off you make with a spy sickle. But again, it's one that comes up very infrequently. For the most part, it does its job quite well as a temporary shield against fire. The biggest annoyance with this is that once the spicicle melts, it immediately switches to your sapper instead of your revolver. I understand why this is the case. Since the revolver can run out of ammo while the sapper can't, it means if you waste all of your ammo and then melt your spicicle, the game might not know what the hell to do if the revolver is the default switch. But that will never happen. And even then, I think a single line of code could probably fix that. Oh, wow, it can, cool. This definitely comes into play when considering one of the more recent and popular uses for the Spicicle. Its use in Gunspy play. Gunspy is in this weird hybrid state between being kind of a meme and also one of the better and more consistent ways of playing Spy. Like, the syringe guns have a higher DPS than the revolver does, and yet, the revolver and even the ambassador are very effective tools in the right hands. And whether you're the cleanup crew to your team's fight, or whittling down targets on your own, you can make a dent in some teams with a solid gun spy. Where the spy sickle comes into play here is not just as a knife to use when someone so graciously offers their backs to you, which is always appreciated around the holiday season, but also as a more consistent version of its usage as a pyro insurance tool. When you go out of your way to get into a gunfight with a pyro instead of trying to play spy normally, then having a tool like the Spicicle on hand can be very effective for giving you an edge against them and keeping your health pool as high as possible for the next fight. Whip out the Spicicle as a pyro is flaming you down, switch back to your revolver, and start blasting. As long as you're accurate, which is understandably pretty difficult when post-jungle inferno flares are a thing, you can gun down the pyro in just a few quick shots and move on without even suffering from afterburn. It's basically a pyro-specific dead ringer that allows you to shoot your gun while you're under its effects and when you pair that with an actual dead ringer to get away from other fights, it can be surprisingly effective. Especially when you use the festive revolver in the holiday season. It makes the bullets 25% more cheerful and deadly. So yeah, the spy sickle is kind of weird. It gets around quite a bit, from normal spy play to gimmick good gun spy, and with everything we've talked about, it raises the question of, is this thing even balanced? Uh, probably? I think I'd like to see a version of the spy sickle that isn't just meant for screwing over pyros, which, hey, totally exists on our Rebalance server. I mention it every video. First link in the description. It's in the back of the phone book. I paid a lot of money for that ad. But honestly, if the Spicicle stayed the way it is, I wouldn't be too upset either. It's a curious little weapon, but I think it's all right. And that's what Christmas is all about.
Ah. Unless the... Uh, that's why spies a luck-based class. 